Purple mushrooms. Where are they and why do you want them? That's what we're talking about in today's guide. Everything from making gaseous weaponry to getting a snack for your thrall wheel. Well, those are basically the main uses for them. But if you are playing PvP, you will be using a lot of them for making the arrows. Not only are they great for poisoning an enemy from afar, but if you happen to have some explodey arrows, you can shoot them and go boom and do a little bit of extra damage. It's great when you're raiding on foundations and you want to stop the burn and get some extra damage done. And it's pretty much the only way to raid with actual explosive arrows. Doesn't work quite as well with explosive jars anymore for some stupid reason. Gas orbs do. I don't know. But in saying that, you can also shoot that and then throw a gas orb over there. I will also go boom. They just don't travel as far and aren't quite as precise as arrows and are much more heavy, but you do need them to craft arrows. Noxious gas arrows, that is. I'll go into a bunch of the crafting details and our lovely snacks a little later, but for now, the locations and some of the benefits to harvesting them. You do get a lot of XP, so if you do see them about and you are below level 60, smack them up. Higher the tool, the better the XP. Also, keep them because then you get to make the noxious arrows at some point, or drop them whatever. You can use a sickle, a pick, an axe. They're quite easy to harvest. Don't generally harvest them by hand. That's kind of a waste. But let's get into the locations and when you might find them along Noob River and some other places about the Exiled Lands. Our first location is right by the Sentinels on the border of 3 and 4G. There's a nice little patch here you can gather with some berries nearby. Not far up the river we'll find our next little patch just here on a sandy embankment. Let's spot again. It is located in 3 and 4 H, just a bit up from Hanuman's Grotto. You can go and get a whole bunch of crystal in that cave, come over here, whack yourself up some grubs, get a whole bunch of grubs for something, making silk, and gather all these guys. Just down from Narrow Neck Span, we will find our next little patch in 4i. Medium sized little patch. Still an I4, but just a little bit further down the river is this little patch. You could definitely run down here with even a stone pick and end up being probably close to level 60 by the time you reached the lotus and you could do that to level up the rest of the way. Definitely very possible. On the line of IJ4 there's a little island that you'll find a fairly little patch but a patch nonetheless. J5 we have this peninsula fairly decent sized chunk of mushrooms here plus some crocodiles to get their hides for a good source of tar. Just across the river from a little exiled camp where you learn specialty cooking 10. You'll find a patch underneath a tree. We're in L5 also. And just a hop skip and a jump down the river you'll find a few more chilling about the place. Fairly spread out but they're about. Gotta watch out for the abyssal rhino dudes. They'll smack you all sorts of places. They're not too tough to fight anymore though. At least there's that. Over at Dagon's Embrace in 05 and 06 we can find a whole bunch underneath the trees here. They're super easy to hit with the pig. I find the ones on the hills easier to hit. And over on the other side there's a bunch. Whee! And a whole lot of ape men that you can kill for some XP. There's an island near the Bay of Hulks in 7L that's just completely littered. You could almost just come here and do your leveling and go down to uh, the next place because there's a few more there and get the lotuses also. There's a lot here. In the Swamplands a little bit further east by the eastern barracks there's a whole lot of purple lotus. Big old tree in the middle of the swamp with a chunk underneath and it's very close to that last island so you can run between the lot and just level up in this little area if you don't mind for respawn times. It'll be like one or two respawns with the amount that's here really though. If you don't mind a bit of a climb this next spot is great. It's in K7 located on a hill. I'm pretty sure there's a pathway out somewhere but there's a whole lot here right here. If you're feeling a little bit spicy and you want to do some fighting for your mushrooms and maybe get some free armor out of it head on over to Zalta's Refuge in 7J. You can use some of your newly acquired skills with the bow and explosions to mess them up. Although they will usually be trying to attack you so you're going to have to jump up somewhere like this and gas them out. They'll return home and it's quite annoying but it is possible to sit and snipe them to some degree. Especially if you shoot them and do a bit of extra damage at the same time. I do have points in agility but they're not like wildly well specced. <laughs> You'll poison yourself or with your own gas do keep that in mind. 
kind. And generally the ones with the yellow border are the ones that drop the armor. As you can see, he kind of messed me up and I'm wearing fairly decent armor here. So take care lightly if you are early game, but you can get some really nice early game stuff off them. Yes, it doesn't have heat or cold protection, but it's free armor and it does vitality, which is nice. Definitely plays better roll out the front though. I'm into creative mode again because it's quicker. Enter into the cave itself and you will find the mushrooms scattered about on the rocks. There's a fair few about here. You can definitely fill your pockets pretty nicely and get some cool sobek shit while you're here. If you're looking to make some roast mushrooms acquired at Lynn's Watch, in recipe cooking nine also can pick up backpacks here which is fun if you didn't know it's some supply materials Whee! we're gonna need some amanita mushrooms these little red top fellas predominantly found in the north it is what the berserkers used to eat to berserk amanita muscaria or alleged berserking anyway a little bit of random trivia there you can find a lot of them right here you can also make your way over to the jebel sag dungeon located here and for the low low price of only five feral flesh you can get yourself a potion of midnight gobble that up and make your way to the land of amanita mushrooms don't know why they don't have some puffballs in here considering they're all green but at the end there's some glowy red ones Ah, uh, yeah but if you're looking for a place to level here is excellent hit the mushrooms hit the beasties get their hides get prepared for war you can even get up a fair chunk of godzeal in here also so it's a nice place to come from on the regular anyway. You do tend to get a whole lot of orbs drop from Thrall's pockets. You can get some demon fire orbs these days too. I'll go into that in um, the Rady Explody video. I tend to dismantle the grease orbs that I get and I turn them into water filled flasks and then turn them into gash orbs and then the noxious gas arrows etc. It's a nice good free way to build up a whole bunch of them as for the most part you're not going to be using the grease orbs unless you're trying to blow up something super tricky. Again another video video explaining all of that stuff. All you need is some form of alchemist bench and an alchemist at least a tier one to be able to craft yourself some orby bits and also how to fill flasks up with the water which is nice. You will also need to make the water orb if you don't already have them from the previous strat. If you're looking for glass flasks I highly advise don't craft them in the casting table it's more expensive that way and you need a whole bunch of glass which needs crystal. Sure if you get some drop in a thralls pocket but I digress. Come over to Sepimaru with some crystal and visit Svernos Skinflint and you can get 10 flasks for one silver. It's a bargain and considering there's a silver mine right nearby you can literally have a little farm right there just for getting flasks. You'll likely be wanting to turn those gaseous orbs into gaseous arrows. Visit a carpenter's table. The higher level the cheaper the stuff's gonna cost. You do have to be at least level 38 to craft them and there's a journey that you have to unlock first to get to them and then you can unlock these guys afterwards. I tend to keep a lot of the iron head arrows that thralls drop too just so I don't have to mess around and make them because they drop a bunch. Pop them in here and then you can get some feathers usually from thrall crates or killing birds. Super easy to find them. Pop them in here. You can use a carpenter it makes it quicker but there's not really any need either. It's pretty decently quick and it does craft five at a time. Strangely though you may note that they're not used in the vapor traps. You'd think they would be but Funcom does Funcom stuff I guess. Now let's talk about the roasted mushrooms. Make your way over to an improved stove or a regular stove. A regular stove just has less slots and is a bit slower. It doesn't make it any more expensive. This guy is actually more expensive to craft so do with that what you will. Place some coal in there. A cook if you got one and for the low low price of just one one you can craft yourself a butt ton of these guys which is going to go excellently in your thrall wheel as they have a really long timer. They craft quite quickly, four hours. There we are. And sure, with thralls taming super quickly these days, it's not a huge importance, but you can then save your gruel for actually feeding your thralls, which is a lovely little option. Mostly applicable if you're a single player and you're a bit hard done by for some resources, but definitely a little handy thing. Upon eating it, we get 10 points of healing every three seconds, so it's not a bad little sated healing snack 
snack either. You can also make mushroom stew, not sure why you would, as it does require a soup and only does four points of sated per second. Okay, um, I guess it probably fills your food and water maybe with the soup part, but we have mushroom tea. Again, eh. for six points and a herbal tea or an iced tea or whatever it took, I don't think that's wildly worth it, but you do find it a fair bit in random Sumerian's pockets, so drink it while you can, I guess. Speaking of Sumerians, you can also make Sumerian feast, which gives you 50 armor and would be why you need the mushroom stew. You do get this drop a lot from Sumerians also though. Feast of Ymir could be one of the cheapest feasts out also, requiring black ice, meat strip and roasted mushroom to craft. It lasts for a long time, it gives you a heat buff and a lovely 12 points of healing every three seconds. Kind of worthy. If you don't want to spend the 50 attribute points that it costs to craft to learn the altar of Ymir, if you didn't learn him as your beginning religion, you can venture up to outcast camp and talk to this guy sometimes and learn your meow. And if you're into taming animals, you can also get some shade spice variants of things. I can't remember what they used for to get the percentage on. If you know about taming animals, then you probably know. But you can get the shade bloom that you require to craft these guys in the Jebel Saga dungeon where you can get a whole bunch of Amanitas while you're at it. Let me know in the comments if you use gas arrows when raiding or you happen to use mushroom variant foods. I'm always curious to know. Stick around and watch one of these guides coming up on how to play Conan Exiles. If you found this information informative, smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you're not already. And until next time, have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be. Have a good one.